I've changed my mind on this, so I'm going to try that. I hadn't seen this in a long time. <clears throat> I thank God for saving me and for everything he's, he's done for me. He's been, he's been really good to me. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon his word. I thank God for the mountains, and I thank Him for the valleys. I thank Him for the storms He's brought me through. For if I'd never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. I'd never know what faith in God could do. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon His Word. Y'all pray for me now. I feel like my voice is a little bit weak, but, you know, I guess I've just been basking in, you know, the good time that we had Sunday. And I thought of uh, Brother Randy's testimony and him talking about how, you know, he has locked up you know, for something he didn't do for so many of those years. But, you know, I've been, you know, locked up in a prison in myself and a lot of those things is what I've done and uh, but you know I guess just kind of thinking about the Christian life I started thinking about it and when I talk about this y'all are going to recognize what I'm talking about on the Andy Griffith show old Otis would come in and he'd get the, the keys and he'd put himself in prison well, how many times have I went back to prison and God set me free. But I put myself back in. But I just want to bask in the Him setting me free. And I want to be free. But uh, hey, when I sing this song, try to get it out. But if God set you free tonight, let's let Him know about it tonight. When I think of where I came from and how Jesus brought me out from a life of shame and sorrow lost in sin without a doubt with all my heart I want to praise Him for His love He gave to me when the precious hand of Jesus reached way down and lifted me from the depths of the pit i tried so hard but i couldn't touch him there in my despair i cried so loud and yet it seemed he didn't hear me lost and undone full of sin 
And so corrupt, God's hand reached further down than I could reach up. Like a man locked up in prison with no one to go my bell. Every time I sought for freedom, all endeavors only failed. There I was in sin's dark dungeon, bound in chains of misery, until the Lord paid me a visit, unlocked myself, and set me free. From the depths of the pit, I tried so hard, but I couldn't touch him. There in my despair, I cried so loud, and yet it seemed he didn't hear me. Lost and undone, full of sin, and so corrupt, God's hand reached further down than I could reach up. You know, I just like to think back. You know, uh, I can remember being a 12-year-old boy the day that the Lord come by and knocked on my heart. And, you know, I accepted him as my Savior. You know, I didn't know everything I was getting into, but that's the best thing that ever happened to me. I just want to thank him tonight. I just love him. Have you ever wondered how close you were to the fire when Jesus rescued your soul? Lord, would you please remember me? Now there's a man up in glory with a smile that won't erase. He's shouting three words to everyone he sees. Just in I was lost and I 
Well, I was near to despair when he came to me there. And he showed me that I could be free. Then he lifted my feet, gave me gladness complete. When he reached down his hand for me. Do you remember it? Sing it, church. When my Savior reached down for me, He had to reach way down for me. I was lost and undone without God or His Son when He reached down His hand for me. Amen. I'm glad He wrenched through all the junk, all the spider web of sin that had you wound up so tight. Amen. I mean, daily, every day, He just kept winding you a little tighter, a little tighter, and a little tighter. Amen. To a point to where you'd give anything in your power. Amen. Not to be where you are, but you can't get out of it. Amen. So listen to me, young people. You can go down that road, but there's no guarantee you'll get back. Amen. You go down that road, amen, you will get wound up in sin. All the roads wind to the hog pen except one. Amen. And there's one road coming out of the hog pen. Ain't you glad that he reached down through all of that sin? Amen. He got down where you was. Just I'd just see him and picture him in my mind. Open them big, big old wide arms up and say, if you want out of here, I'll get you out. Amen. I thought about what David said. Amen. I'm guilty just locking my own self back up in the prisons that he set us free from. But can you say I'm so, so, so happy. Amen. He didn't throw the key away. He come back again. Amen. If you want out of that prison, sell that key. He's still the key. He's still the key. Amen. He still swing the door open wide. Amen. I'm telling you, they ain't a greater feeling to know than you're free. Amen. And whom the Son has set free, He's free indeed. Amen. They ain't no way you can fly bound down. You gotta be free. Amen. Let's get free like we've never been freed before. Amen. The devil, he don't throw it all on you at once. Little by little. Pretty soon, Brother Johnny, the Bible said where, there no, where no wood is, fire goeth out. Amen. We're satisfied in finding cold weather gear instead of gathering wood. Help us, Jesus. Galatians chapter number 6. Galatians chapter number 6. It's an honor to see in the Lord's house. God's been dealing with me uh, about this message. My heart's been heavy. And uh, I feel like, and I, uh, uh, I normally don't say stuff like this, but I feel like there'll be people watching over the internet tonight uh, that needs this, and not because I say it. And please don't think I'm anything, and you know that, please. But God is a God that can reach where we can't see. Amen. I'm grateful. Please pray for me that the Holy Ghost will help me just a few moments tonight. Verse number 1 of Galatians chapter number 6. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's all that I'll read tonight. Amen. Thank you for standing in reverence to the Word of God. Amen. And I want you, I want you also to turn in your Bible. I'm not going to read this right now. I just want you to hold your place 
of, in 2 Samuel chapter number 21. 2 Samuel chapter number 21. I want to preach tonight out of verse number 2 of Galatians chapter 6. Bear you one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. I want to, I want to preach a minute and God uh, help me just a few minutes please. Amen. I want to preach on you don't have to fight this alone. Amen. Now, I've been thinking all day and I've been trying to meditate on the scripture and trying to get my mind zeroed in on the service tonight. And amen. I want to be, I want to be, I want to have what's right. Amen. When I get up here, I just don't want to say words just to be saying words. Amen. I want to give what God, amen, wants me to give. Amen. So tonight, I feel like, amen, I want, I've thought about this today and I've been working by myself today. So I've been thinking a lot and I've been listening to the Bible all that I can and, and uh, brother Johnny you can be you can be a pastor of a church and feel lonely amen you can be a mama and have kids running all around your feet and feel lonely amen you can be standing singing in the choir uh, standing beside somebody with their hand up and tears are running down their face and feel lonely amen now loneliness is a cruel disease you stay with me now uh, just a little while amen if the devil can do anything Amen. He's going to try to make you feel isolated even on an island all by yourself even though you're not by yourself. Can I say tonight, amen, you don't have to fight this by yourself. Amen. God is a God. Amen. That if you'd done it by yourself, he would be there. Amen. But that is not, you've heard me say this, and as long as I'm here, I'm going to keep saying it. God did not design us to have to fight uh, by ourselves. Amen. God help us in a unit amen together to fight together and bear one another's burdens amen there's times that your burdens is going to be too heavy for you to bear by yourself that's why he puts you in a little group of people amen to lean on one another hallelujah have you ever felt like amen that you could fight a bear amen in the power of the Lord I have amen but there's been times I felt like you could literally spiritually now just blow me over because of the burdens hallelujah that come against us amen we don't know if we can stand or not amen but can I say the only thing the devil wants you to think is ain't nobody cares about you ain't nobody loves you amen and you're fighting alone but can I say you're not fighting alone by the way oh Elijah said just take away my life amen I'm the only one left but God come to him in the cave and said what are you doing here I've got 7,000 that's not bowed their knee to bell can I say there's somebody on the other side of the world tonight amen that's fighting the good fight of faith they're having to hide to worship the Lord they may not have much of a Bible but they have gave their heart to the Lord and they love him with all their heart is anybody with me tonight can I say we're not in this by ourselves. Amen. There's a group of people heading in the same direction and we've got to help each other make it home. Hallelujah. You don't have to fight by yourself, Tim. That's what we're here for. I talked to a fellow, amen, this week. Dot called me two or three times today. Sometimes she meant to, other times she didn't. You know how that goes, don't you? And this is what she said, I'm sorry to bother you. I said, honey, you're not bothering me, that's what I'm for. Amen. My wife will tell you I'm not much of a listener. Now, if we're not doing any talking on the phone, I'm going to hang up. It's just the way I am. I'm not much on calling you and you calling me and me hear you breathe. Amen. I'm not into that. Tell me what you want to say and let's move on. Amen. I guess I learned from my mother, my grandmother. You'd be talking when they got done, they'd just hang up. They wouldn't say bye. They kissed my foot or nothing. Amen. So I guess I've adopted some of that. Uh, me and Brother Jason Nunley work pretty close. Amen. There's been times I, hey, somebody walked up to me and I needed to talk to them. Somebody called me on the phone in the middle of a conversation. I needed to go and couldn't say bye. I just hung up. What else do you do? Amen. But oh, 
Listen to me now. I might not be much of a person. Amen. To sit there. I told a fella today, there's things that you're going through, David. I really don't know what to tell you. Come on, are y'all listening to me? Amen. There's going to things you bring to me and talk to me about. And you know what I can say, John? All I can tell you is I'll take it to him. I'll tell him about it. Amen. Do you realize you can talk to me about anything? Amen. And there's 99 out of 100 things I'll have to carry to him because I don't have the means to help you. Amen. But you can take everything you've got to him. Hallelujah. I said you can take everything thing you got to him and they ain't never been one thing that he didn't say I can't fix they ain't nothing hallelujah you look at a valley of dry bones in Ezekiel 37 with a, with a whisper of the spirit of the Lord he can bring things back together and can I say hallelujah we're in this together in these days I don't know what to do hey, but I'm glad I can call some of you and you go to the father thank God for people that Hallelujah to fight this good fight with. Now God can use one to whoop an old army. Well, he gave old Samson a jawbone of an ass. Slew 10,000. With a jawbone of a donkey. And he threw it down. Then he got thirsty. <laughs> Talking about God can do anything. He went back, picked that jawbone up, got it, cut and made a hollow place. And there's a spring coming out of that weapon. Hallelujah. God can do anything. But God called a little old fellow about that tall. I'm saying about that tall. It don't say how tall he was, but he is a ruddy youth. And he got out there in the middle of a bunch of people that had a bunch of armor that they're scared out of their ever loving mind. And he had a God, amen, that said, You come to me with that spear and sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. He said, The battle is the Lord's. Amen. He got him a stone out of his out of his shepherd's bag, and he put it in that slingshot, and he headed towards that giant in the name of Jesus. Amen. And bow down come the giant. Hallelujah. Many, 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 many days went by. Amen. After many battles, after many victories. Amen. After God had come through, that one writer said, Saul has slew his thousands, but David has slew his ten thousand. David was a man of war. David was a man that knew how to use a sword. David was a man that knew how to trust in the Lord. But can I tell you, it don't matter how big we get, one of these days we'll need help. Did you hear me? I'd say, Brother Joe, they was... I can. I've just pictured him, Brother Johnny, on the battlefield, with God on his side and the ability that man had. The people that would fall at the hand of David in one day. Second Samuel. Second Samuel. Twenty-two, twenty-one, verse fifteen. I know I'm doing this different tonight, but this is what God wants me to do. Moreover, the Philistines had yet war against, again with Israel. And David went down, same one that went down in that valley against so Goliath. Here he goes again. And his servants with him. And, David, and, and fought against the Philistines. And David waxed faint. That's right, Jeremiah. And Ish... Be Benob, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight. He being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. Now what's any different than Goliath? David's weak. Come on now. And Abishai, the son of Zerurah, succored him. You know what that means? Rescued him. Here's old David. Old David's getting weak. 
Oh yeah, let me let me change stories. I'll come back to David. God spoke to Moses. He said, Tomorrow, I want you to go up on the hill. I want you to take the rod. The same rod that you stretched out over the water. And I want you to go to the top of the hill. And I want Israel to fight against Amalek. Amen. This is what he said. He went to Joshua. He said, tomorrow, I, amen, I, I listened to it two or three times today to be sure. He said, I will go to the top of the hill. Amen. Tomorrow, while you fight against Amalek. Amen. But when tomorrow come, oh, Moses started up the hill. And he wasn't by himself. There was Aaron and her walking along beside him. And because he said when he lift up his hand, he knew the end result of the story. But he still got weak. Can I tell you, I know we're more than conquerors. But I still get weak. I know that God will come through. But you still get weak. I know God's a prayer answering God. But we still lose our faith. Can I say we need somebody? to go up the hill with us even though we do what God tells us to we still get weak and the Bible said when he would stick his hand up Israel would prevail and when he would take it down the Bible said he waxed faint his hands was heavy so were yours so were yours so were yours. So were yours. Brother Johnny, I really look up to you. But I've been there when your hands got heavy. I've seen my wife spiritually on top of the world. Then I've seen her come in here and shake y'all's hand and hug your neck and smile at you. But she was so weak spiritually. And I don't mean this bad, and please don't. There's been times in her life, it was she was almost glad the boys, the babies were sick, so she wouldn't have to face you in fakeness. Because she was weak. She was weak. But thank God, thank God, thank God. I'm so glad in this family of God. You don't get weak and God not notice it. I said you don't get weak and God not send somebody your way. I'm so glad. I said I'm so glad there's somebody to walk along beside you and say lift your hands up, lift your hands up. Hey, we're in this for the long haul and the devil trying to isolate you and make you think you're by yourself but we're not alone there's people around us to help us listen to me you don't have to fight this by yourself these people under the sound of my voice whether it's in here or out yonder you're fighting things in your mind that's tormenting you and you're almost ashamed to tell anybody because of what it really is If I tell them, they'll think I'm weak. You may be telling me and you don't realize I'm weaker than you are. These things that you could bring to me and if you'd really open your heart up, the devil would tell you you was ignorant for sharing that with me. But he's ignorant. No, let me rephrase that. He's very smart. Because if he can keep, you keep that housed up inside. There's a fellow that I know or knew very well. Very well. Very well. Lived by self. Some of the best times I've ever had with God is by myself. Some of the worst battles I've ever been in mentally is by myself. I mean, I didn't think nothing was going on in this man's life. But loneliness got the best of him. And instead of taking it to somebody else, I have seen him as he come in my parents' home and then look at him and tell him, we're so happy when you're here. And tears would drip off his chin. Because Brother Johnny, I didn't think nobody cared. 
But if that devil can ever get a nail drove in your heart to think, I've got to keep this to myself, you might just drive yourself crazy. God can help you. But there's people around you. There is somebody that God can put in your life that won't run their mouth to nobody else. There is people that run their mouth. God won't send you to them. But there is people that will just listen and cry with you, help hold you up, because there'll be a day that you'll need them. We're all in a warfare in our mind. We're all thinking, does anybody care? Does anybody care? Sitting right in the midst of people that love you. The devil. This man, this man took his own life because loneliness drove him over the edge. What could he have done? Turn to people that love him. How simple. But yet so hard. When you're in the battlefield of your mind and the devil says, nobody else cares. I was praying today and this is what the Lord laid on my heart for all to call. I want everybody just to sit real still with your head down. Maybe in this service tonight, there's somebody that God has hooked a set of jumper cables between your heart and theirs. You say, I know they're struggling even though they're smiling. Nobody looking around? Maybe you just need to slip up, go get them by the hand and bring them to the altar and just pray with them. And doing by that, that'll let their heart know, I don't have to fight this by myself. They might be somebody here. You say these people are struggling, but I don't, I don't feel like they can kneel. You see, it don't matter how old you get, you may not even be able to get down on your knees in the altar. The enemy never stops fighting your mind. Maybe there's somebody here tonight that would slip up and go get somebody. I'm just following the leadership of the Spirit. Maybe you're struggling in your mind. Maybe you're struggling. Say, preacher, I'll be honest. I'm weak. Don't feel bad about that. Because I just read to you about a man. Even though Goliath fell. Chapter number 22 of 2 Samuel, them giants come back, you see. He had to have help this time. But I'd like to glorify the Lord to say, thank you for sending help. Thank you for sending help. Maybe you're struggling tonight while we all stand to our feet. It's okay to struggle. Just don't struggle alone. Just don't struggle alone. These altars are open. I know you're here. I can almost feel your heart beating in my spirit. What's people going to think if I come? They're going to think that you need help. There'll be a time that I'll lay the microphone down and get in the altar because I do. But you don't have to fight by yourself. You don't have to fight by yourself. There's an Aaron and a her spiritually to hold your hand up. Thank you. Somebody else might need to pray tonight. You might want to come and pray with these that's coming. People start coming to the altar. Don't ignore them. Don't ignore them. Invest your prayer in their unspoken request. God, would you please, in Jesus' name, please, 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 God, would you move tonight? Other people need to pray. If you're fighting, don't wait on somebody to come and get you. The Lord's already pricked your heart. Just come. Just come.
while we pray together. Lord, in Jesus' name.